Guys, today I am inside my 240SX at my house where we first started doing our videos. So if you guys have been watching since then or have seen our first video, you probably know exactly what's going to go next. I am going to be building the 1.5J swap for my S14. I just picked up a motor from my buddy Zach and it is NA2JZ. I'm going to go right now and start tearing down that motor so you guys can see exactly what goes into building a 1.5J. The cheap easy and kind of correct way so right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go start the tear down of that motor and i'm going to show you guys the um new well the new bottom end for the uh 1.5 j so i'm pretty excited to get started on this though i have been waiting for like what feels like six months or something maybe it's more than that maybe it's almost a year now at this point <laughs> No, it's not almost a year but i've been waiting quite a while to get this car back running again so this time we're going to do it right i'm going to be refreshing the block so I'm going to go take it, get hot tanked. I'm going to go, or I'm ordering uh, new bearings, new rings, every gasket. I'm going to redo everything. We're going to do it right. I'm super ready to get this motor ready to go and in this car because I can't wait to drive this car again. This car is so much fun. I'm super excited. I really want to see how this is going to turn out. So this is going to be, technically it's going to be my fourth motor I've ever built. But um, the last time I built a JC, I ended up taking it to a buddy of mine. Uh, Mark Walker. He used to be the crew chief for Odie Bakshi's and so he built the motor that was in this before. Um, reason that this blew up we figured out was I had overheated it and we were running the stock ring gap for a 1JZ um, and we were running you know quite a bit of boost around 17-18 pounds in this thing. So I am doing he gave me some advice on how to build this so I'm going to be doing this a little bit different than the last build. Um, again it's going to be a little bit looser of a motor because I'm planning later on to run ethanol in this. So it should be pretty cool and it's a cool process. This is probably going to be a multi-part series because we're going through and building a 1.5J from literally like scrap, I guess. So I just got this JZ off of Zach um, in a trade. It's a 2J non-VVTI. So that's a perfect motor to do a 1.5 J with. I'm really excited actually. I'm ripping this thing apart. I got it ready to mount up on the engine stand. So uh, I'm going to get it up on the engine stand and I'm going to start doing some cleaning of it, get it nice and ready, and then start doing a tear down. Okay, so we pulled the head off of it and cylinder two. Might need a light so you can see. Can you see it? Mm, no, I can't see it. Can you see it now? Hold on, hold on. Can you see it now? No. Can you feel it now, Mr. Krabs? Oh my god. Dude, hey, you, you guys didn't do it. Here, let me do it from there. There you go. Okay. Look at that. Okay, so we'll pull that off cylinder. Dude, get out of here with this light. <laughs> so, cylinder two is completely trash dead. So Zach had another block sitting around. I already tore it apart. It's at the machine shop right now. I pulled the pistons out of here because I'm going to be using those pistons in the other one for the 1.5. So I'm going to be going today to go get that machined. I'm bringing this back to Zach and uh, we'll get back to you once we get the new motor on this stand. We got this ready to go. So I'll get back to you guys when we have the other 2J on here and um, we're gonna saran wrap that up and pretty much put that in a. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna saran wrap that up and we're gonna put that up in the side of my garage, just kind of tucked away until I have time to get that one out. Pop the hood. Yeah, pop the hood. Pop the hood. Pop the hood. <laughs> pop the hood.
That looks like a mess. Yeah. I had to pull all this stuff out. You remember when there was a motor in here, Daniel? Yeah. First, first video. The first video? Or, well, the very first vlog is actually us taking this to the dyno, technically. Yeah, technically. And the second one was after I blew this up uh, <laughs> six months later. So, yeah. We're getting better at doing vlogs, though. Yeah, we are because Give it was like it was comments. like April in like <laughs> April like 2018 or 2019 was our first vlog, and then our la next one after that was like October. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so so give us a like in the comments because we've actually been putting a lot of effort into this and you guys have no idea how I've much... putting in effort. Well, yeah, but I've been here too. Um, you guys have no idea how much it actually takes to get some of these videos done. Dude, it takes forever. Editing these videos is fun because they're like easy. You don't have to do like cool effects like you do in like stance videos that Sean shoots for us. But man, dude, we gotta we gotta do some stancy videos again too. I miss doing that. Yeah, let's do some cinematic stuff. Dude, Maybe we, we can incorporate it into the vlogs. Yeah, we could try. I mean, I'm lazy, so that might not work. That motor was toasted. So good thing Zach had another motor ready for me. This one I was able to take apart at Zach's. I didn't record any of it because I was just rushing to get it to the machine shop in time. So here is the new motor. This is freshly hot tank, so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scotch bite the sides and do a, a nice coat of silver paint on this because I kind of want it to look like how I had my last motor. So while it was there at the machine shop, I got it blueprinted and we have all the measurements. I just ordered standard size bearings, piston rings, everything to get this thing ready to go. So I didn't overnight it. They're not from Japan, but they are two day shipped parts out. So here in the next like day or two, I'm gonna be knocking this out, getting the bottom end together, getting the head gasket on, slapping this the head on this thing and getting it ready to go. I am like full force moving forward on this thing. I have the crank on my shelf kind of wrapped up right now and so I'm not really looking to move it. But, um, and I kind of like wrapped it up tight because I really didn't want anything to happen to it because it was gorgeous. But you guys will see it here in the next video when I'm going to put it inside the motor. So what did I do also today? Another thing that I did was I pulled Zas 1JZ out. So I got the motor out, got the transmission here on the side, and this thing is pretty messed up. I ended up pulling the clutch off and getting everything ready. So now that I have the 1J out and ready, and then I have to strip a few other things off of this, I'm gonna try and get the oil pump off and I wanna like open it up to make sure there's not a bunch of like uh, material inside there, just in case some of the bearing material ended up breaking off. But yeah, I'm just gonna get everything swapped that I'm keeping off of this motor, all the accessories and everything off of this. And one other cool thing that I'm actually gonna try out, I have a spare oil pump, and so I took off the um, cap on the side of it, and I'm doing what one of Rad Dan's videos, he did a video on how to increase the oil pressure inside of your Jay-Z. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on mine but I might be ordering the uh, drift motion pump. I'm just gonna test it out myself and see how bad I do because I mean, I have an extra pump. So I'm gonna test that, I'll get back to you guys with it, even if I can mess around with it or whatever, but it's gonna be doing, actually, I'll show you. What he does on his motors, <clears throat> here on the side of the oil pump, there is a 12 mil Allen head, and that's an actually a, a blocked off oil route. So what he does is he takes this out threads an AN into this, taps this line here on the block that goes and feeds to the um, oil filter. And what he'll do is he'll block it off here and block it off up here. And then he has a straight AN line coming off of this to his oil filter relocation. So by doing that, you're reducing the amount of 90, because I mean, this is a harsh 90 that this thing has to take right here. Apparently it reduces the oil pressure in the motor quite a bit. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to pull this out and I'm going to test this and see what I can do. Since I do run an oil filter relocation, I'm pretty excited to try this. I think it's going to work out just fine. So I'll be running all dash 10 lines for this and I'm pretty excited to see how this works out. It should reduce. Also, I had some kind of almost kink. It like literally did a, like a spin to get into my 
oil filter relocation kit. So when I do this, I'm pretty excited to see how this turns out. I'm gonna be breaking this out into multiple videos just because of the fact that there's gonna be so much content with this and there's so much information that I have or that I'm finding out that I'm gonna be throwing into this video. So um, thank you guys for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. In the next video, I'm gonna be going in and putting in the crank and hopefully the pistons if the piston rings come inside come in time so i'm pretty excited to keep going with this and make sure to stay tuned <laughs>